Hi, my name is Cy Porter, and I'm just going to show you some uh, tips on rigging a cutout puppet in After Effects. And I make these tutorials to get the word out about my animation work at solomation.com. If you'd like me to, if you like these and would like to, to see more of them, um, encourage me to make more by checking out my website. So, here we go. Um, as you can see here, um, I'm in After Effects right now, and uh, let's see what we've got here. Let's look at the one, the head of my one character here, Lily. So um, I just want to show you what I've done. Now these are all images imported from Photoshop, and um, basically you can see that there is the mouth layer. You can see it here. And um, here's an eye layer. And um, so um, I went ahead and, and uh, made shy the other layers because I'm not working with them. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, there's a button over here that helps you organizing organize it by making it so that even though there are layers in the composition, you just kind of make them tucked away where you don't see them while you so you don't get confused and can work with the layers you're working with. But um, so, but I want what I want to show you is that there are other layers here as well. We've got the so as we go through here, um, here's the head layer. And okay, if I if I turn off the head layer here, you can see I've got the eye layer, the jaw layer, and the neck layer, and the tail layer. Now what I've done is the pigtail is on, is one of the top most layers. Here it is up here. So it's going to be above the body and everything else. So but so I want the pigtail to be above the body but the rest of the head is is lower down meaning that if the head layer and the body layer intersect the body layer will cover up the head layer and as you can see with the jaw the jaw is in a layer below the head layer so that the head layer will cover up the jaw layer. You can see here's the jaw here. But the jaw layer is above the neck layer so the jaw layer overlaps the neck layer. You see how I have that? I have that in three parts. So when you move the jaw, the jaw is below the rest of the head but above the neck. and as you might notice, I have the rotating, the pivot point, way over on the upper left side, right below the ear. And that's because I want the jaw movement to resemble real life jaws that, you know, if you, if you check, if you, you know, check your own jaw, check where it rotates, um, you'll see that you're jaw moves in very much the same way. Now there's a lot of cutout where they'll just have like this mouthpiece that moves up and down and that looks totally unrealistic whereas may as well make it move similar to way the way jaws do in in real life. So again there's the jaw movement and um, then with the eye layer let me find it here real quick. Okay, the eye layer, I have the pivot point back here by the ear. And that just makes it so that when it closes, it it closes it it how would I explain it? It doesn't rotate at a sharp angle. It just kind of closes down um, as if it's not pivoting but just moving downward. So by moving the pivot point far to the left side of the eye you're able to make it just move up and down and, and that's for the blinking and again the eye 
is below the head layer. So in working out rigging out in working out rigging a puppet head, it's good to divide the head up into as many parts as you need in order to have good overlapping. On some heads I don't have the neck separate from the rest of the head, but this one I wanted the jaw to definitely overlap the neck. And of course the pigtail you want to overlap the body, so that that's another part that you know there are times where hair or hat or you know whatever does not necessarily need to be separated out from the head. I hope that helps and again uh, check out my work at solomation.com and I hope you have a good day.